Hey, Mom, there's something in the back room. Dude, Tom DeLong is feeling so vindicated right now. Dante and Nicole just sent me a new, uh, a new assignment, okay? And I can't believe that I didn't think about this. Dude, yeah. Blink-182 used to be my favorite band of all time when I was growing up, okay? Tom DeLong, he's a hero, right? He's always been a goof. He's been talking about these freaking aliens forever, dude. But... He's not a goof, and he's going to be vindicated, so vindicated, soon enough. I just reread this interview, and I wanted to share it with you guys, because it's still spot on. And this was on, duh, I had it written right here, February 18th, 2015. And then right around the same exact time as when this was released, this article right here. Blink-182's Tom DeLong has officially gone batshit insane, okay? Let's, let's read. Actually, first, before we go into that, hey, do you guys remember when uh, Travis Barker's plane crashed? What was that all about? You guys know my theory, right? That all plane crashes that happen with celebrities are uh, usually on purpose. Otherwise, wouldn't you as a celebrity never fly? Like, dude, you know how many freaking celebs crash, bro? This is the original reason that we started the Miro board and we never got back to it. Look, all of these plane crashes are fucking, I think, done by the CIA. <laughs> Dude, so many. It's so many. Do you know how many politicians and actors and stuff have died in plane crashes? It's like abnormal. It, it, dude, if you are a celeb or a politician, you should never, ever, ever, ever get in a plane. Now, I am convinced that most of them crash because the eye in the sky, you know, the agency, they literally have an eye in the sky that I think lases planes out. I think, I think it goes pew. And then you never see, there's no projectile. It just puts a little hole. Or dude, honestly, remember hearing about Tesla and the vibrational frequency that he could do to planes to make them <coughs> disapparate? <laughs> disappear well yeah you could do that with the tesla thing or literally just a laser so anyway all that to say doesn't matter i have a theory that if you're a celebrity and your plane falls out of the sky it's because the agency did it to you and they wanted you to crash and i thought about travis barker and i was like what the frick dude why was he getting taken out and then now he's with a freaking kardashian bro He's with a Kardashian. Not only that, he's with a Kardashian that is literally has a kid with someone else. Anyway, so weird. But dude, and then I read this incident report and it didn't get lased out of the sky because it didn't even get into the sky. Apparently it was going down the runway and people saw sparks and it was going like really fast and then they tried they aborted taking off and tried to stop and couldn't stop because the brakes didn't work and then they ran into a wall and the plane looked like this okay so then i i get to look and i say what the frick dude wait 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 this plane crashed in what 2008 why what was travis up to then was he like trying to was he trying to convince everyone to like be independent and like not give their record labels their rights or something or like what what the hell was he doing or was he being like trevor moore and like telling everyone that they should like band together and like shouldn't get traumatized by the central intelligence agency and then dude here's where i knew here's where i knew that they had it in for either travis or dj am like that dude actually died later okay here look yeah, look, and Drew Pinsky blaming this crash on DJ AM's drug use, which is what killed him a year later, heavy drugs. And Drew Pinsky gets on TV and he goes, yeah, 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 he got, he was sad from that plane crash that didn't kill him and then the drugs killed him. So I just got to say, I mean, we know Drew, Dr. Drew, be a fed, okay? If he's up there saying that uh, it was drugs, I, it makes me think that it wasn't drugs and probably someone killed him. But what the fuck was Travis up to? Why was he getting a hit on him? Look, the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety Board, you know, my mortal enemy. The people who said that the <laughs> Tower 7 uh, fell because of fire. Uh, well, they said that several tires were severely underinflated and punctured during takeoff. Pieces of the tires damaged the plane's hydraulic system, causing the plane's brakes to fail. And then they blamed it on the pilot. The captain therefore aborted the takeoff 
after V1 violating these operating procedures. So that's again how you know that it's not the pilot's fault and someone did something nefarious and the NTSB is covering up for it because that's their job is to cover up for the FBI and the CIA. Anyway, and then yeah, now he's married to a Mossad agent, Courtney Kardashian. So anyway, let's read this Tom DeLonge interview. It's pretty good actually. When did you first believe in the existence of aliens? How did it all start? What's funny, two decades decades ago when I got into this, it was such a the world is flat scenario and here's Tom running around about UFOs and they just laugh it off, but now NASA's holding symposiums on the inevitability of finding life in the universe. The Vatican is talking about, yes, there's life out there and how it interferes or doesn't interfere with the church's view of existence. You see how the church is the second person that he mentions? They are very curious about this and I would say that's because they know that life is out there because they stole that information from Tesla before killing him or, you know, contributing to his death. Anyway, right. You have to understand, I've been involved in this for a long time. I have sources from the government. I've had my phone tapped. I've done a lot of weird stuff in this industry. People wouldn't believe me if I told them, but this is what happens when you start getting on an email chains with hundreds of scientists at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory with diff and different universities around the country, and you start outing senior scientists with Lockheed Martin talking about the reality of this stuff. Guys that hold 30 patents, guys that work underground out of the Nevada test sites of in Area 51. It goes far beyond just saying, hey, this little light this little light in the sky, that's a, that's a little green man. That doesn't lend the right gravity to the topic. You've had your phone tapped? Yeah, yeah, I did. For quite some time. Years ago, there was somebody who was gathering 150 hours of top secret testimony specifically for congressional hearings on government projects and the U.S. secret space program. People from NASA, Rome, the Vatican, you name it, they're all on here. The top 36 hours that summarize the best part of all of the footage. I had it hidden in my house for a period of time, and during that time, I was flying this person out along with somebody that was Werner von Braun's right-hand assistant. Werner von Braun was a Nazi scientist that we brought over to build our Apollo rockets that got us to the moon, and on his deathbed, he told this person a bunch of stuff, and I was flying them out of Los Angeles, and we were taking certain meetings. At that time, a lot of weird stuff started happening. A lot of weird stuff, Wally. You want to read? Ready? Were you concerned about your safety at all? Partially because they do weird stuff. At the time I didn't know, but the person I was dealing with was being awoken in the middle of the night with clicking and buzzing noises and falling to on the ground vomiting every morning at 4 a.m. I know now that those are artifacts from mind control experiments where the same technology that we use to find oil underground we can zap somebody at the same frequency that the brain operates on, and it can cause some really horrific things to happen. But I didn't know this until 10 years later. I got caught in the middle of it, and this was the time when I was on the cover of Rolling Stone. So I think these guys, whoever was running this operation, were like, what the fuck? How did this kid show up? This photo. This is the Rolling Stone thing. When you first started reading about this stuff and getting more knowledgeable, did you ever try to talk yourself out of it or think... I must be crazy if I believe that this stuff is real. At first I believed everything I read. Then I got to a point where I didn't believe anything I read. And then I came out of the back of it saying to myself, half of it's real, half of it's not. Dude, that's like literally, that is the process. <laughs> What people have to understand is the basic history of the UFO is very simple. The phenomenon has been around, around forever. All the ancient religions were written down based on witnessing the phenomenon in various forms. Governments of the world watched the phenomenon and tried to replicate the technology, but they did it in secret. So the governments are fighting each other with these pieces of technology. But within those little skirmishes, the phenomenon is still here. And it's much more advanced, so in order to hide what the governments are building in secret, they blame it on spaceships and aliens that eat your brains and all this weird stuff. But it's all in an effort to hide what we're really building. Something that is real, but is exotic and esoteric. And it's all part of a plan. And as we find out that the phenomenon is real, they're hoping it won't be as bad as we thought it was. Because we were scared along the way. It's a real complex game that's been played. Especially since the 80s. The CIA was very interested in the UFO civilian 
family and research groups with the intention of being in control over all the research and the public awareness. It was a psychological operation. And we know that's true from yesterday's reading, right? They said we infiltrated all of those groups and we took control of them to limit their information and infiltrate and make sure that we know what they know and to steer them away from whatever the hell we don't want them talking about. They were very scared of Americans being gullible and having Russia come in and repeat a war of the world scenario. So the CIA said, we better get in there and make everyone go crazy, but at least it's controlled. And when we're in charge, we can slowly let people know the phenomenon is real. But don't worry, we've been building something secret to help protect us. It's a crazy thing, but it's real. <laughs> Why do you think this topic means so much to you? Why do you think it's resonated throughout your life? I think it's the biggest story of mankind. You take Christianity, a guy named Jesus came and died on the cross for everybody's sins. That's not as big as a story as what types of intelligences are living across the universe. I mean, the Deep Space Project by Hubble, which is taking our most exotic telescope that we've ever made at the time and focusing on the blackest part of space for 11 days straight. Literally a grain of sand, if you held it out at arm's length, is what the focus of the orbiting telescope is at for 10 days and it came back with a one inch by one inch colored slide with 10,000 galaxies in it it's like we have trillions of galaxies and in each galaxy there's trillions of planets it's just unreal you've been you've never been shy about your beliefs you've had a song aliens exist and i remember you talking about this in rolling stone but at the time blink 182 presented themselves as young carefree guys and when you started talking about aliens with angels and airwaves and then you launched strange times uh, people started to go, oh, he's really serious about this stuff. People will be like, oh, you believe in UFOs, but I'm reading books on physics. I'm reading books on the secret space program. I'm talking to people that work underground for six months at a time that are confiding in me about the national security initiative. I've literally read 200 books on the subject and I don't spend my time looking at UFO reports or talking to little green men. I'm way past that. If anyone tells you there's no life in the universe, you should be turned off. That's just such a dumb thing to say. It's totally universally accepted amongst the country's elite scientific establishments that there's life everywhere. The question is what kind, where, how'd they get there? What are they doing when they get there and how do we communicate with them? That's when you start reading books about the mind and consciousness and telepathy and ESP. It's a whole different program. Was it tough in the beginning for people to believe that you're serious and knowledgeable about the subject? You're not just some rock star with a hobby? To give you an example, one time I remember bringing up a very specific craft that I believe we're building in secret to emulate the phenomenon that our government has been observing for decades. So I started talking about the craft and its magnetic slide system and how it displaces over 89% of the mass of the ship, how it ionizes the engine, how it glows. I went through the whole thing and this engineer looks at me, this guy is 70 years old and he goes, you better be real fucking careful about what you're talking about. And I go, okay, so I'm close. And he goes, I'm I'm not fucking kidding with you. You better be really fucking careful. And he calls me up the next day and he goes, I've had calls about you. If someone comes and asks you to get in their car, don't fucking get in the car. <laughs> and that's the shit I'm dealing with. Dude, amen, brother. Did anyone ever try to get you to take a ride? Thankfully, I've had one interesting thing happen to me where I believe somebody was trying to get to me that was in the intelligence industry. And that's as much as I want to say. A very interesting thing happened. Yeah, I bet. He's like, a very interesting thing happened. The CIA guy tried to pick me up and throw me over the balcony. Like, he literally said, I'm going to Trevor Moore you, and then I gave him a billion dollars. <laughs> According to your Instagram, a little while ago, you took a trip out to Area 51 with your friends, right? Can you tell me a little about it? We had two nights. We did one outside of a secret base called China Lake, and that was on the flight path to Area 51 which is known as Groom Lake. We camped out at the north end of that, about 200 miles from the nearest staff location. We were above an area called Tunopa, which is where they test fly a lot of different things. So if you remember, I was talking about a person that was gathering all the footage for the congressional hearing. That person was telling me the big belief, which I had corroborated by the university professor that was in the know, by the way, that the communication of this particular phenomenon is the frequency of thought. So part of communicating and making contact is shutting your mind down and being able to project your thoughts. And this guy was telling me about it and this whole protocol for how it works. When I went out there the first night, 
we decided to run through this protocol where you project your thought. So we decided to do it and we were up mad late, but nothing happened. I kept telling the guys if anything was going to happen, it would happen at three in the morning because that's when <laughs> that's the time when these things happen. Don't ask me why, but we put about four logs on the fire and everything is illuminated by the fire and we fall asleep around one or two. I woke up right around 3 a.m. My whole body felt like it was, it had static electricity and I opened my eyes and the fire is still going and there's a conversation going on outside the tent. It sounded like there was about 20 people there talking and instantly my mind goes, okay, they're at the campsite. They're not here to hurt us. They're talking about shit, but I can't make out what they're saying, but they're working on something. Then I close my eyes and wake up and the fire is out and I have about three hours of time lost. Dude, this reminds me of something from my gateway tape experience, bro. Okay, you know when you start feeling the goose pimple, goosebump feeling and it's like, what's it called? The transition or whatever? It's usually when you feel like, you, sometimes you feel that quick falling feeling. That is when you're falling asleep and that is when your body is, your consciousness is leaving your body, right? Dude, when I... I have been getting into that when I, when I really, when I do, uh, or like control it kind of, I keep hearing like what I thought was a whole bunch of voices and it was only for a split second. It's like I opened a, a door into a big ass hall or something with a bunch of people talking and then I shut it really quick because I was like kind of startled by it. And dude, you feel like, I feel like that's like the body buzz high feeling that you kind of feel. Like I feel like when I'm, when I'm really meditated and I'm about to do the body buzz feeling or the body buzz feeling it is I would describe it as static electricity dude this is all the same shit this is real dude this is so much confirmation this is awesome boys keep doing your tapes okay okay so he goes I had about three hours of lost time and the interviewer goes huh <laughs> I get everyone up first thing in the morning and go did anyone hear all the chatter last night I couldn't move my body I was stuck there I, I couldn't hear anything the, and one of the guys I was with goes yes they're all around our tent they were talking i told you <laughs> and the other guy slept right through it he had no idea what we were talking about it sounds like it sounded like english but you couldn't make out the words you knew you weren't threatened you couldn't move your body but you were very aware of the conversation going on for a period of time but this is the scary part if you look up and study abductions of people people that have had contact and a lot of the stuff that you can read from john mack he was a member of harvard psychiat psychiatry apartment department he almost lost his job because he started writing books about ufos and people getting abducted harvard tried to kick him out of the medical group but they lost he got hit by a car in mysterious circumstances pretty odd right but when you read his books and study what he was doing a lot of people who have these contacts talk a lot about chatter like you're in the middle of people working how fucking crazy is that nothing else no footprints no weird like marks or anything like that and then he talks about some nonsense but he says i don't th the smartest people i know are into this stuff because they're more universally aware the more educated you are you tend to understand how vulnerable and insignificant we are as human beings amen dude and that's a cool feeling that's good like we are not it bro we are not it but that means that everything else out there is cooler than us, so that's cool. Do you think the moon landing is real, or do you think NASA faked it? And then my poor boy, my poor Tom, he probably, I would love to know his answer now. Because this was 2015. He probably hasn't seen a funny thing happen on the way to the moon, you know? <laughs> he probably has by now, though. I bet he's changed his answer i think it's real absolutely people have to understand you know that the department of defense is bigger than apple right so when apple releases an iphone apple will plan it out and spend billions of dollars and get thousands of people to figure out how to tell the story how to manage the story and how to get their point across there's nothing different in the department of defense when it does something big so when we landed on the moon they're going to give you something to chew on they're going to go and find a conspiracy they're going to plan out the conspiracy they made everyone think that we never went there that way when you ask questions you're asking questions they want you to ask they didn't want the conspiracy to be the real fucking question which is what was there when we got there they placed the conspiracy just like 9-11 the main thing is that terrorists did it the backup story conspiracy they fed you was 
No, it was an inside job. What's the third story? Another nation state? An extra nation state? You know who did that? Do you think in your lifetime we will publicly make contact with an alien life form? I think we already have. Whether or not that will be published or not, I have no idea. I think absolutely it's been happening forever. It's been happening with individuals all over the world. It's been happening with governments to some degree. I don't think we're working underground with aliens. I don't think it's like that, like some dumb conspiracy theorists think. I think what's go gonna happen, mark my word, is they're going to find the microbial life that they've been talking about on Mars, and then it's one planet over. We're gonna send people up there, and we're gonna find remnants of other types of life, but really what's going to be there are remnants of other civilizations, architecture, old monuments, machinery, things that have been fossilized, whatever. And then that will get dripped out for another 30 or 40 years, maybe, there was a civilization there and bro i i bet tom's changed his opinion on this too because bro i'm i'm fully on board on these humanoid ebe like aliens there's no way the military wrote that shit they are real they are fucking real <laughs> it's awesome dude it's so cool and yeah there there were civilizations all over dog and another reason that you know that we've seen them is all the megalithic structures here there's no way that we made those dude they're too big they're too big they're cut with fucking cnc machines we did not do that a hundred thousand years ago if we were to make contact with alien life forms is there anything you w would want to ask any of them if you had the opportunity hmm that's a good question I don't know what I would ask them. I, I'd ask them, how did it all start? And I bet you they wouldn't even know. Dude, that's awesome. I was think I was literally thinking that yesterday. I was like, what would I ask EBE? And I would ask him how it started. And I bet he would know. I think he does know. We'll see. I don't know, man. This shit is cool as fuck, though. All right. Uh, see you in a little bit. Well, I'm gonna oh, I'm doing a CIA Oracle thing right now. Get ready, okay? Here it comes.